Welcome back to GMT. Now, imagine going cold turkey on social media for a month. Just how much time would you save? Well, it is 100 hours apparently. That's according to a small survey by the British Royal Society for Public Health, which is encouraging people to take a break from social media for a month. Scroll Free September is a campaign which aims to promote a healthier relationship with social media. 58% who took part last year say that their quality of sleep improved and more than three quarters of participants said they noticed an improvement in their mental health. Well, I'm joined now by Emma Walker, who's a postgraduate student whose own research on social media saw her quit Instagram for six months so far. And Dr. Narina Ramla Khan, an expert on sleep who works with the Royal Society for Public Health. Welcome to you both, ladies. Thanks very much for being with us. Emma, let's start with you. You went cold turkey on social media and you're, you're still off it, I understand. Yeah. What inspired you to do that and what kind of impact has it had? I suppose so I was doing the research um, on social media and young people and I was sort of reading, you know, the method section where it's working out. Um, how whether children are becoming depressed from using social media too much and I was like hang on this is actually really relevant to me you know you read something and you think this is what I'm researching but actually going no way this is affecting me too and um, things like we were talking about um, self-esteem and sleep deprivation and how it just is so addictive and you, you don't really realize the time you're wasting on it and um, you know all the things you could be doing instead and it just occurred to me that I should get off it and I was like actually you know it would be really good for me to stop this and straight away you know I realized I have so much more time I concentrate so much better at, at work and at home I have time to talk to people you know you, it's really great actually the RSPH has as part of their scroll free September they have one thing which is like you can be a social butterfly so you pledge to go um, to not be on social media during social interactions, which is a great idea, just this kind of, you know, how can we switch back on and switch off our phones? Okay. It's really good. Uh, very interesting. Dr. Ramla Khan, full disclosure here, the last thing I did before going to bed last night was, of course, scroll through <laughs> social media. And I found myself thinking, why am I doing this? Put it yeah. away. But there's just something so addictive about it, isn't there? What impact is it having on our sleep? Well, I'm certainly very busy. I've never been busier, and I've been helping people to sleep for over 25 years. And um, I'm the sleep expert for Silent Night, and so we've teamed up with yourselves. And the research that we're coming up with um, is showing very compellingly that so many people are doing what you're doing. Um, the worrying thing is that, you know, young people, young children as young as six years old are also, you know, they're using, overusing their phones, their tablets before they're going to bed. So what am I seeing? I'm seeing people saying they have difficulty getting to sleep, difficulty staying asleep waking up feeling as if they haven't slept at all, waking up feeling like they've just been, there's noise all night, very noisy sleep. And all of these uh, can be indications that your devices are feeding too much information into the brain. So neurologically, that's having an impact on the depth and the quality of your sleep. Emma, your research was conducted with 11 to 14 year olds. I've got an 11 year old who's just got a phone, so I'm really interested and concerned yeah. about what kind of impact uh, this new device is going to have on him. But a lot of the social media apps, actually, you're not supposed to even be on them at that yeah, kind of scary, age. Yeah, it's scary, isn't it? Like how young. Yeah, yeah, how young they are. But what did the kids tell you? It was actually really encouraging. We spoke to, so it was 11 to 14 year olds, and they were all, they had so many self regulating. Like they, they were not on it in the bedroom, in their bedrooms, they were not on it at the, at the dinner table, they were not on it at school. Um, and a lot of them actually said it was really funny. They were like, it's actually my parents who yes. are worse. Yeah. My parents are on their phones all the time. They're the ones that tell, yeah. give the rules exactly. and tell them they can't so do they it. So they were all really true. frustrated that their parents yeah. break the rules that yeah. they make. And I think a lot of them really wanted, you know, they could not use their phones, but they wanted their parents to also be role models and not mm. using their phones. It's very yeah. true, isn't it? We need to model the right behaviour, do. don't we, we, Doctor? Yeah, we need to be the change. And I, you know, one of the things I would recommend is that families, you, they do this as a project and they start thinking about designated areas, designated times where they won't be on their phones, signs on bathroom doors, I hate to say it, but you know, this is a technology zone. Um, in the bedroom, phones out of the bedroom, no phones at dinner time, yeah. choose to watch a film and not have phones with you. 
things like that which can start to make a difference and break this the compulsive behaviors the addictions because it does become compulsive we discussed in our family having a screen free day one of the weekend days yeah. it's the horror of all of us I, have to yeah. say. I think i'd be the worst i uh, find it more difficult emma we've got positive twitter day which is trending on twitter so this is a campaign to make debates more civil uh, on twitter challenge abusive behavior online do you think we need to have that kind of thing a bit more absolutely that's a great idea yeah I just get it because that's something too that's so difficult one of the the pathways that the paper talked about was um uh, online harassment and it's so true you know you get especially young people you see you can't escape from it you've got your phone all yeah. the time and you're so um open to people being mean so that's a great idea just to make these platforms more positive so that when we are engaging with them it's a positive interaction uh, doctor just one yeah. last question to you how much of it uh, the difficulty we have with sleeping after we've been on a phone is about what we're looking at and how much to do with the lights from the phone as well yeah it's a, it's a combination of things it's the light level it's the association it's the stimulation it's the emotions it stirs up when you see somebody doing something that you're not doing or somebody having okay. uh, more attention than you're getting it's building it's okay. a neuroscience behind it it's building trust so Dr. that you can Ramakar, sleep we've got to leave it there Emma Wolf, okay. thanks very much we should all commit to a screen free day. Could you do it? Not sure if I could. Thanks for being with us. <laughs>